So let's go back over here. So in that case here, this is simple. Just kind of find x, which is going to be plus 3 on both sides. So you're going to get 4, and here you're going to get 2. Now, in order for, now if you have a 4 here, so basically x is less than 4, um, in your head you can kind of think x is equal to 4. Well, if that's the case, and you plug a 4 into here, you get the 1, right? So if that's the case that that 4 could be plugged into x plus 6, right? x plus 6, and that would make it 10, right? And you can kind of just see it here. If you add 6 to the x here, you're going to get 10 on this side, and on this side you get 8. So thus, absolute of x plus 6 is less than 10. So hence, delta is equal to the minimum of 1, which it could have very well been 0.1, but we used 1, and epsilon over 10. Okay, so basically you're going to choose between um, this or this, whichever one's smaller. In this case here, this one's going to be smaller, obviously. Okay, because epsilon over 10 is a pretty minute number. Okay, so let me actually show you an Excel spreadsheet that kind of shows you what's going on here. Um, I'll explain different aspects of this, but this right here, solving the delta inequality, basically means that if your function, once you set it equal to zero and you find an answer, and that three, remember I told you how that three, as you approach three, that little rectangular box um, with the bound becomes uh, zero, and the delta basically is zero. Well, let's say the delta was 0.1, okay? So in that case, the clearance basically is 0.1, and that means you have to use a 3.1 to get that 0.1 to pop out, you see? So I put 3.1, so basically I'm adding the, um, the 3.1 into this, this delta x minus 3, and that yields me 0.1. That same 3.1 plugs into the x plus 6, yielding me a 9.1. So what I'm doing here is I'm dividing 0.1 and 0.91 by this 9.1, which gives me my epsilon over the bound, which becomes my delta. Okay, so in this case here, I could probably just write this as an equal here. And here, I'll go ahead and write this as an equal as well. Okay. But in reality, what's actually happening is you'll end up with something less, but this is just for you guys to kind of see it yourselves right now. Okay, so remember I plugged in uh, 3.1. Now watch what happens when I plug in 3.1. You see, it reveals this is calculating my delta. My delta, basically all I'm saying is take my delta, multiply it times my bound, and that should give me an epsilon. And over here... I'm basically saying, okay, what is my delta? If I divide, now if I'm dividing both sides of this right here by the bound, then I'm going to get delta is equal to epsilon over bound. Remember how I showed you over here in this illustration that the delta is equal to the epsilon over bound? That's what this is over here. Delta is equal to epsilon over bound, and it does work out. It's actually equal to it. So... Remember, I used a bounding factor of 1, so let me plug that in, 1. You see how I get this delta is less than epsilon over 10? In this case here, really, it's actually equal to. Okay, so if that's the case, that means that whatever point, whatever difference I have here of point 0.1, this delta, new delta, should be a little bit less because the bounding factor that I used, starting with the 1, that 1 unit, makes my bound bigger. So if I divide epsilon by a bigger number like this 10, it becomes smaller, right? So watch. Let's say I use 3.2. 3.2. Look at my look at my difference here in the delta. It's 0.184. So every time I increase this by the delta by some by some number, so instead of just 3, I'm put I'm adding like 3.5. That means this should be 0.5, but because I'm using the bound the bound of 1, and it bounds the x plus 6 to 10, this will be just under. So watch, as soon as I put enter, it's going to be like 3.4 something, right? Yeah, you see, 0.475. So 
if I wanted this to be exactly it, then I would use the exact same delta that I had before. So in this case here, my delta was 0.5. So let me put 0.5 right here. And watch, when I calculate it, I'm going to get the exact same number again, 0.5. Okay? So that's why you use the 1. The 1 makes everything smaller. Okay? So watch, 3.9. This will be like 3.8 something. You see? 3.2. 3.184. And you can see the difference right here, look, 0.184, just here and here are the same thing. So I'm just going to plug in numbers so you see it happening, 3.3, 3.4, 3.5, 3.6, 3.7, look at this, 4. See, so I went to the very next one, and it happens that this is exactly the same so I would have to use a bigger bounding factor like two or something right see so it all works out this just you gotta trust me on this whole thing here it, it's all formulated but let's go back to what we had before we were using 3.1 and a bounding factor of one for here which produced a 10 as a bound for x plus 6 okay so it may take a couple times to watch this to get the idea but you see um, our clearance over here is 0.09. That'll work just fine, so we can actually use that as our new delta, but I'm going to set this equal to our 0.1 again, okay, just so that way you see that everything is functioning properly here. Okay, so let me go back over here. Oh, and just to kind of uh, recap, down here, this helps you find a delta. Up here was just nothing more than the inequality we were solving here. Okay, so let me go back to what we were doing and let me bring up our proof so we could finish it up. So you see how short it actually kind of is. There's not a lot of steps, but there was a lot of explanation. But I really think you needed to see, you know, at least what some of these things are. And what's going to end up happening is this. Tomorrow morning, this will all make more sense. And then the day after that, the next morning after that, it'll make more sense. And then the morning after that, it'll make more sense. And I su strongly suggest you watch this video and kind of fast forward the things that, you know, you kind of understand and go to the things that you don't. And I'm trying to say as much as possible. And I'm trying to say it in many different ways because I can't just say it one way and expect everybody to get it. So I'm trying to say as many things as possible in as many ways as possible. So that way one of them fits, you know, makes something click in someone's head. So I might say it one way. Hopefully, you know, 20 people will understand it that way. While the other like 300 are going, well, I don't get it. So I'm trying to say it, you know, in many ways and in such a way that, you know, it suits everybody's uh, need for understanding. So... So now what we're going to do is, is basically do the check.